All right, it's time to get episode two reaction analysis from Mr. Echidna himself. Give it to me. Gentlemen, we just got another amazing episode of ReZero Season 3. This week, Subaru can't stop dying. Sirius dropped a diss track against Amelia. Regulus was photographed attending a Diddy party. What? I mean, this is the white party, right? Honestly. You know what? That's not too far of a reach. This is the white party. Everyone wears white. Regulus is probably there. That's where he probably got, like... The other 78 wives that's still alive. Attending a Diddy party, Reinhardt showed up just to beat the shit out of another woman, and Amelia made some really cute sounds. Yeah! So, hey. about the cliffhanger, hey. Amelia hey. gets kidnapped by Regulus to become his wife, and I don't mean to- Listen, I think Regulus is doing us a favor. I think that Regulus saved Amelia from Fortuna, presumably. Sirius is flames. I think that Regulus saved us, but he's taken a bit too far. He's taken a little bit too far. Bring back the Rem vs. Amelia waifu war, but Amelia fans, is this really who you're siding with? I'm just kidding. Say what you want about- Nobody's siding with this guy. Everybody is probably so mad, and it's funny because, like, the whole episode was Sirius getting mad at Amelia, saying, You homewrecker, you fucking slut, you took my husband away from me. Now, part of that I'm sure has to do with, like, the Witch of Envy Satala and how Betelgeuse is always, always going for Satala. But also, we did, quote-unquote, kill Betelgeuse at the end of Season 1, right? And then it's the whole theme of, like, you took my husband away, you homewrecker, NTR, and then in comes Regulus and cucks us. Regulus just takes Amelia and says, this is my 79th wife. I wonder, because, like... In season two, it was stated that Regulus does just he didn't plan to show up at the highway near Flugel's tree. Gluttony did. Lie wanted to show up because his whale pet got defeated. Regulus is just chilling around. If we take that same mindset and apply it to Pristella, is Regulus just wandering around just to find another wife while other three archbishops are like carrying out some sort of mission and Regulus just not just does not give a fuck? About Regulus, but I'll admit, the man has some good taste. The new opening and ending songs are both bangers, but I'll talk about them at the end of the video because- Spoilers. But not spoilers. They are fake spoilers. Because I just want to get into this episode immediately. This episode opens with Subaru speedrunning Return by Death. It's only been 5 minutes and 33 seconds since the last one, and that's including the opening. So that was easily his fast- That- that was so fucking fast. Now, wait, wait what about that one where we got stabbed by, uh, Dumber? How long did that- Maybe that wasn't- maybe that took a little bit longer. Including the opening. So that was easily his fastest death ever in ReZero. Also, his voice- The headbutt's funny to me. Every time we die- we're back here, and the funniest shit is Subaru is having a mental breakdown. It's like, oh no, there's not enough time. We're cooked. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? And she just spamming the same NPC dialogue, and everyone else is having like slice of life casual dialogue. The contrast between how chill everyone else is and the Subaru's mindset is always funny after each loop. Ever in ReZero. Also, his voice actor did such an amazing job conveying the epitome of fear in this scene. Mm -hmm. Sirius actually explains her authority pretty well this episode. Here's what she said to Subaru in the novel. Your okay. gentle soul felt Luzbel's fear. Through you, young Luzbel experienced your fears that had been born from his, and that additional fear that young Luzbel felt flowed back into you. And this so if we have a sociopath that can basically understand Luzbel's fear, but like not feel it, like what would happen if Ayana Koji was here? If there is a person that cannot sympathize or empathize with other people's feelings, like the fear or the terror that other people are feeling, someone so gone, so disassociated from like humanity, do you think that the authority of wrath would not apply? They pro it probably wouldn't, right? It sounds like you need to feel that shit. Your soul needs to empathize and feel that shit. In this manner, you shall feel the same joy, sadness, terror, and even pain. So basically, she can multiply your feelings indefinitely with the feelings of others, mm -hmm. including pain and death. In this episode- That's right, he pissed our pants and we pissed our pants. Loose Bell started vomiting, we started vomiting. The moment that you, I guess, well, I still feel like there is a condition right that needs to be set up and it's interesting how Sirius said it took around 30 seconds last time as she went clap and said that's how much time it took you to get my attention and then this run because uh, Ratchins used the flare to call Reinhardt everyone was directed their attention to that flare which was even easier for Sirius to get their attention 20 seconds 25 seconds or something right 21 seconds I think so I think that is definitely a precondition that needs to be met on like a greater scale but it, 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 it's it's 
I'm slowly getting it. It's not definitive, but I'm getting the idea, roughly. She creates a feedback loop with Luz Bell Sphere and Subaru Sphere, growing stronger and stronger back and forth until the extreme terror literally kills them. It might have looked like Subaru died from being strangled by the chain, but the novel suggests that it could have been cardiac arrest due to it. He wondered if the ultimate cause of a second death was cardiac arrest from extreme terror or simple suffocation from being strung up by his neck. Either way, he'd pay a high price for trying to save Luzbo by himself. The craziest shit was like when we fell down and the, the uh, thorn-like chains were wrapping around the neck and he instinctively tried to like free himself by clutching onto the neck and then boom, bro, the fingers all getting just sliced up, ugh extreme fear and that's a lot cooler in my opinion. Wrath is truly a terrifying authority because it quickly escalates any emotion to its most extreme version and the yes the AOE prowess. Now I wonder what the limitation of this is right there's something very interesting that happened when Reinhardt started attacking Sirius because when Reinhardt started attacking Sirius these villagers did not take damage but you saw how Reinhard killed Sirius at the end and everyone else got sliced up. It seems like a manual toggle on and off of Sirius being like, okay, damage inflicted onto me, share damage to others. Or is it like a limitation of range where Reinhard basically kicked Sirius so high up that like it was like not close enough, like the proximity between Sirius and the people to shake, take share damage? Potential applications of that are insanely dangerous. For instance, a simple argument between two or more people would probably evolve into a fight to the death. Yeah. Or a group of sad people could all be driven to suicide. Or like we saw last episode, a group of happy people would become so blissfully happy that they can't stop themselves from Madness. cheering and laughing. True wrath and madness. Thing at the horrific sight of a child falling to their death. And remember, all Sirius needs is one person to die and the rest will follow. It's like the authority of communism. You die? <laughs> authority of communism? Sure. No. Everyone dies. We die. I would rather not resort to using violence on a woman. This he said he said I would rather not. Okay? He gave them an option. I mean, he didn't really give Sirius an option. <laughs> he just went in. I, I, I think the situation warrants it, right? Equal rights. Reinhardt is a feminist at heart. This was probably the best scene of the episode, in my opinion. It was just very cinematic, and the shocking nature of this revelation leaves you with a feeling of dread as you realize the- People are thirsting over Subaru in this frame online. They're like, oh my god. Subaru is so hot when he's like so depressed. Yes. I'm like, what the fuck? Authority of Wrath is a problem not even Reinhardt can solve. This Well, if Reinhardt was alone, yes, he could solve this, I think. But here's the thing. Sirius is not going to create a situation where it's going to be a 1v1 alone, right? Of course, she's going to use this advantage of many people around to do this. You could maybe say that like this is Reinhardt's first failure. I don't even know. How about the Teresia incident with Wilhelm being mad? Could you consider that a failure? I'm not sure. While Reinhardt himself didn't lose, he did pretty much kill Subaru, right? Pretty much. I mean, it was the shared damage. He killed everyone here. I wonder what happens in this timeline if it continues, how Reinhardt feels about this. Would he be going on an all-out just like rage mode or is he so calm and collected that he'd be like, wah wah, it is what it is. Time to go slay the other archbishops. Dread as you realize the authority of Wrath is a problem not even Reinhardt can solve. This authority could easily get out of hand if used during a protest. Or oh my god, bro. Could you imagine this shit in real life? Bro, all the fucking protests, especially during election season. Oh my god. Bro, imagine Donald Trump with this fucking authority. <laughs> I mean, he pr at the end of the day, I don't think Donald Trump has the authority of wrath, but people who are charismatic and listen, you can hate him. You can hate the fat orange man for all you want. You cannot deny that he understands media. He understands the average person and how to look good on TV and unite the monkeys and have them all kind of fall in this trance like 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 mad state. So like, bro, like this shit would be crazy if this is real or something like <laughs> that's right the biggest authority huge authority i know it everyone knows it that but the first idea i had was actually a different application just hear me out we already have the ch she was wilding out <laughs> there were some interesting frames that she was what the fuck <laughs> she's on all fucking four bro
<laughs> That's how mad she was, though. Just hear me out. We already have the chains and whips, so just imagine having sex with Sirius. Now, let's take that and build upon it. Would the pleasure that she feels is something that we would feel? For example, Reinhard cut Sirius and everyone else got cut. If Reinhard were to penetrate Sirius here, then Subaru would be getting back shots by Reinhard. Right? This authority... <laughs> this is some freaky shit, bro. <laughs> this, is some, this is some freaky ass shit if you think about how, like, everyone can share the same fucking feelings and <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, we already have the chains and whips, so just imagine the freak off sex for real. Serious. Men could finally have multiple orgasms. If I come, then so you does come. she, and when yes. she comes, then Air I so come. Yeah, so everybody. We just keep recycling cum in a positive feedback loop until we both come yes, so sir. much that we die. Anyway, the only reason Sirius is truly a freak off still a threat is because of friendly fire so why can't subaru just tell reinhardt to grab her pick her up do one of those super jumps and take her far good question right we should just make reinhardt take sirius out of pristella just get the fuck out run take her out in isolation far far away and kill her in the middle of an empty desert where her authority can't reach anyone good idea obviously i'm just assuming that her authority doesn't have unlimited range yes because when they were fighting when sirius was up in the air other people were not taking shared damage is that a limitation of range or is it because she needs to actively have a toggle on or off like to be aware the presence of the mind to be aware that like uh oh shit's gonna happen like regulus we've seen multiple times where regulus is like seemingly mugen right the infinite gojo technique of just automatic barrier it's not automatic he needs to be aware of it because if that was the case then she could have killed everyone in the world at any point in the story so any exactly and the more i think about this i guess it makes less sense that sirius would be using the radio broadcast to control everybody in pristella i thought that they were being very intentional by introducing the radio broadcast in the morning where Liliana is singing and everyone can hear it, right? I thought Sirius would use that to make everyone like um, get into this trance-like state. But it's seemingly more like Liliana will simply sing again with the radio broadcast and be able to basically just say cleanse and purify everyone's trance-like state. I still want to definitely believe that Liliana's role right now is to counter Sirius. Anyway, it's really interesting that Reinhardt wasn't able to be the hero this episode because we've never seen him fail before, despite being one of the most overpowered anime characters ever. Well, I don't think he failed. Like, I get it, right? Subaru died, everyone else died. But Sirius was taken out. There's gonna be sacrifices, you know? If Reinhardt literally died, if Reinhardt lost against Sirius, I would have said failed. But the fail in this context depends on how you, like, describe this mission. Was the mission to save Subaru and everyone and kill Sirius? Then yeah, sure, he failed. But if it's like, I feel like, yes, even though everyone died, he still took care of Sirius. And if Sirius beat Reinhardt and everyone died, that's a total failure to me. Comparable to Goku and even Saitama, Reinhardt took an L this episode. Half L for me. Half L. It's like, there's no way you could have ever fucking known that, right? It's, it's just a little bit unfair to place this much failure onto Reiner, in my opinion. I'm giving him like a half L, half dub. If he completely lost to Sirius, though, that's a full-on L. And that got me thinking, maybe Reinhardt's weakness is simply his average human intelligence. I'm not saying he's stupid or- He has average human intelligence? or anything but his intelligence is disproportionately low compared to the rest of his stats just that's unfair though right yeah i mean yeah he is not like like he's not as smart as he is strong i think he's not stupid but yeah his, his everything around him right it, it's just the relative scaling of his powers to his intellect it's not even fair just to put it in perspective remember last season when reinhardt fought puck in the yeah and he said you'll only be a hero that's it unthinkable present well when he swung his dragon sword it says that he brought about both the end and the rebirth of the world that's right one swing of his sword one swing of the sword everything got destroyed but then creation started to happen too like grass started to form right 
green plants, blah, 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 blah. All different life started to form around after this, right? Maybe that was supposed to be metaphoric. I don't know. But the point is, Reinhardt's physical power is astronomically higher than his intelligence. So if you can outsmart him, or if he just can't figure out how to defeat you, then maybe... That's where Subaru comes in. Reinhardt is a very strong tool. He's a fucking chainsaw. He's a gigantic fucking jackhammer. But here's the thing. We can't solve the situation with a jackhammer or a chainsaw. We need like a surgical incision, right? Different tools need to be applied here. And Reinhard, his limitations of intelligence and not being aware, I think Natsuki Subaru will simply be the brains of the operations, right? We have, to, we have the knowledge. We'll simply tell Reinhard, this is how we do. We coach him up and Reinhard goes and pops off. Maybe it doesn't really matter how strong he is. Emilia just attacked Sirius with zero hesitation. And I love I that. That was absolutely hilarious. Yes, because Luzbel is in there. I thought Luzbel fucking died. Sirius got a lot crazier after Emilia showed up. I mean, she was already pretty crazy, but she went full batshit this episode. That's right. This time it was actually Wrath. So far, she was hysterical and just laughing and saying, thank you. I'm sorry. Ha ha ha. Right. And then I, I equated her Wrath to be like, madness hysteria but this is true wrath she sees amelia amelia's i don't know exactly how much memories that series still has if fortuna consciousness is still even around if we assume that this is fortuna which is still again just an assumption nothing is ever a confirmation until the show fucking directly tells us and then beyond that even if the show directly tells us the author is either lying to us intentionally or it's pandora who knows but it's like if we assume that she has no understanding who amelia is Right? She just sees the half-elf hair. She equates it to Satala. She also realizes that Amelia and, you know, Amelia's camp took up Better the Goose in season one. That's why she's mad. Homewrecker. And it kind of reminded me of a girl I dated when I was in college. I forget what she was even mad about, but to punish me, she took a pregnancy test and drew an extra line on it to make me think I was having a kid. I was so scared, I became a feminist. I said, babe, I support your right to have an abortion because it's your body, your choice. But she was like, nah, let's keep it. I thought my life was over. I was about to end it all, but... Some scary shit, bro. This is the shit that no one talks about. Because, like, you just assume all men are trash and all women are victims. But there is extreme outliers in both ends of the spectrum, man. Some girls will just literally, like, pop a fucking condom. They'll, they're, they're literally put a little pin to a condom and they'll intentionally trap you. Some pe I, I, Maybe this is just a joke right now of the girl doing this to a kid nut. But I've had experiences not personally but other friends <laughs> where some bitches are so crazy they see the guy as someone they need to latch onto like a fucking parasite for the rest of their life and they like trap them in with the baby by poking a hole in the condom like what the fuck then i realized bro we need male birth control <laughs> we we need male birth control so so that our semen is like not active. It's impotent. Yeah, that's what we need. Wait, you can't get a girl pregnant through Discord? We're long distance. That oh. kid ain't mine. Anyway, serious. Oh, I thought this is going to be like <laughs> a kid that just kind of flexing that. Yeah, I got bitches in college. I fucked. <laughs> I have. I have intercourse. Oh, this guy fucks, bro. This absolutely hates Amelia for some reason. And she isn't the first character to hate Amelia, but not even Echidna hated her this much. Sirius basically drops a whole diss track, insulting mm -hmm. Amelia's existence on the basis of race, calling- It's so sad because like Fortuna, if this is Fortuna, she loved everything out of Amelia, right? The hair, the ear, the eye, everything, right? Everything that Sirius is shitting on Amelia for, Fortuna loved it, and there's this parallel, right? There's this parallel of, this is our mom, but it's not our mom. It's the exact opposite, and it's so sad. And Amelia, I hope she doesn't realize ever, or this is going to be so sad. Calling her a whore and accusing her of stealing Home her lover, whatever that was supposed to mean. As a novel reader, I can confidently tell you I don't know what the fuck she's talking about. I think that the homewrecker just means Betrugus, right? Betrugus is the husband of Sirius. That's the assumption that we need to use for the basis of this, you know, this like theory. Homewrecker, who is that? Well, someone came in, took your, took your husband or wife, right? Why is Amelia the homewrecker? 
Well, Amelia's camp did end up taking up Betrigus. But beyond that, Amelia's association with Satala, the Witch of Envy, even if this is a witch's cult, and I'm assuming that Sirius probably should be in love with Satala. Here's an interesting thing. I haven't seen any other cult members declare their love and affection for the Witch of Envy, like Betrigus has. And that's why he was the most active. That's why he was the most, like, popular, along with, like, Regulus and witch cults, you know, clout. Most of other people are just, like, chill, right? They just chill as in... They don't go around just destroying towns in public. They're, they lie in the shadows. So, what about that association? Does she respect Satala? Does she hate Satala? That Betrigus is always chasing after Satala? And then Amelia equating with Satala? And then Amelia's camp taking up Betrigus? I think that this is the logic that she has in her head, delusioned herself to thinking that Amelia is somehow a homewrecker was supposed to mean as a novel reader i can confidently tell you i don't know what the fuck she there's also a very good chance about uh pandora just fucking up memories right there's a very very good chance that pandora has tampered with you know fortuna's memories Sirius's memories and somehow amelia did end up fucking better i don't know there's some bullshit we can do with that She's talking about stealing your man? Come on, Sirius. Be serious. I can assure you that Amelia did nothing of the sort. In fact, evidence- Dude, she has Tonfas on right now. I didn't even realize during the fight because it was so hype. Amelia was literally changing weapons like every other frame. It was so cool. She has Tonfas. She had like double swords, dual wielding. She had like a lance, a spear, Tonfas again. Uh, she had Wolverine claws at one point. Thank you, Pothel, for the Prime Man. Three months, thank you so much. In fact, evidence suggests that you never even had a man for my client to steal in the first place. So these baseless allegations are frankly ridiculous, and you'll be hearing from my lawyer. Objection! Sirius almost killed Amelia. This scene was sus. This scene was very sus. Which is me. Sirius almost- <laughs> Surprised no one made any fucking memes about this frame. Yeah, Amelia taking back shots, bro. And yes, I think, I think that Regulus saved Amelia. I don't care about Amelia's ice and Sirius's fire canceling out. Nope. In my head canon, Regulus saved Amelia here. Almost killed Amelia here, but Regulus intervenes and yeah. technically saves Amelia's life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Regulus, good guy. He's saving Amelia, taking her out. Yeah. 79th wife, though. Ooh, I don't know about that. He plans to marry her and doesn't seem to care if she consents to it or not. Last season, Pandora mentioned that Regulus had many wives, wives but many. she didn't say the exact number. 79 wives. 79 is the amount of wives that's alive. Okay? There, that's a lot, right? 79 is a lot, but you have to realize this is the current alive wives. <laughs> Think about it. How big the actual count is. <laughs> Bro! Wives is a bit excessive though. I mean, personally, I think I would only need one to three wives per hour to keep me satisfied, but I couldn't handle 79 of them all at once. That's just ridiculous. Well, I don't think Regulus gives 79 wives that kind of attention. He probably has like the one main hoe, but then everyone else is like just a maid, a servant. At least that's what it seemed like in the ending and opening visuals. With that many wives, you might actually need a thousand bottles baby oil. of baby oil. Does Regulus even remember their names at that point? No, it's wife one to all the way to wife 78, and maybe he'll remember Amelia's name. They're all pro probably fucking tagged with like a serial number, bro. They're not Pokemon, bro. You don't have to catch them all. By the way, I'm not jealous. I don't even care, actually. Who needs women anyway? All they do Fuck is you, charge Rachel. their phone, lie, and fake pregnancy tests. Before we analyze the new opening and the new ending, though, I just want to give my A lot of spoilers, which are fake spoilers. Dude, Garfield was soloing a dragon. In the opening, I'm like, I want that to happen though. Overall thoughts on the episode. I guess time flies when you're watching ReZero because this felt like the shortest episode ever. The new sound. That was a great scene. That was a great scene where Priscilla looks at Amelia, then looks at Subaru, right? And he's like, you should go after him. You're going to regret this. Priscilla, even if she hates Amelia, it's nice to see a little bit more characterization of how much of a good person Priscilla can be. And when she starts fighting, oh, dude, I want that Yang sword in action. Episode ever. The new soundtracks by Kenichiro. Kenichiro Suehiro, bro. The god himself. Such a good anime soundtrack composer. Isekai Shikaku, the most recent one, last season, right? Eminence in Shadow. 
Real Zero, and many more. Chiro Suahiro fit perfectly, as always. And the animation and sound design were amazing too, especially mm -hmm. during Amelia's fight with Sirius. I thought hey, some of hey. the visuals looked even better than season one, which is crazy because this wasn't even a priority episode. As for the cut content, this wasn't even a priority episode. In terms of how good an episode should be dedicated in terms of resources, this is like what? 6 out of 10? And it's still this good? Okay. Okay. There was a lot of it, but I think it was mostly necessary. For example, Subaru's conversation with Rachins would have been like 10 minutes long and a lot more annoying if they fully adapted it. So I have no complaints about that. <laughs> what did Rachins do? Just sit there and fucking say no? No, I don't want to help you. What? No, I'm not gonna call Reinhardt for 10 minutes. Being cut, it's kind of weird that they let Subaru and Beatrice talk about using Shamok, but mm. then they cut the part where they actually used it. But overall, most of the cut content was basically just yapping. This new opening was perfect. I love the color bro. direction, and some of these cuts were just insane. Satella got a cameo. Dude, the Priscilla frame was so good. This Priscilla frame, bro. Oh my god, all the different cult members attacking her. She's alone, and she has this like AOE fire orbs all around her, blowing up, making this face. Satella got a. But even more than Priscilla fighting, we haven't seen Al fight yet. You know, why are they hiding him so much? Because he's a, such an important character in the future arcs, right? Al is such a such an important character in the later arcs of Rezero, I've heard, and maybe they're not gonna show us his powers because it's highly implied that he most likely has an authority or has some powers to do with the cult because the witch's miasma is also thick on Al, bro. What's going on? I need to see him fight. Insane. Satella got a cameo. Garfield fought a dragon. Yeah, the Garfield stole a fucking dragon. What the hell? Garfield fought a dragon. The first dragon we've ever seen in Rezio. Exactly. I don't think this is Volcanica, right? Volcanica is pushed beyond the Great Waterfall by Sekhmet a long time ago. Wonder what kind of dragon this is. Wonder if it's like a very strong or like a weak dragon. It seems like every time we see the dragon or that blonde girl who should be the Archbishop of Lust by just like process of elimination, they're always associated together, right? So that's kind of interesting. Zero and it isn't CGI. We got to see more of this. That girl right there. That girl again, right? And the craziest thing is she's Lugunikin, bro. She is... Literally, royal family, Lugunican traits, blonde eye, red eyes, blonde hair, red eyes, fang. And on top of that, she seems to be kind of closely associated with the dragon. And a dragon, we know, makes a covenant with, you know, the royal family. The royal family's blood, I, I, I don't think this, I'm just trying to think, like, does this dragon have a covenant with this girl? Is she actually royal family? If so, which sibling is this? And does this further then add to the theory that... The plague that wiped out the royal family was just a fucking conspiracy lie set up by Pandora and it actually didn't happen. How is she still alive, right? To see more of this unidentified archbishop and we can finally start speculating about her ability too. I know yeah, what the fuck is this, bro? She just throwing out big ass fucking lion faces at us out of her arms? Ability too. I know some of you avoid watching anime. Oh yeah, um, if she's supposed to be lust, right? What what did um what was the defin the the description that Echidna gave us when talking about Carmilla, the Witch of Lust in season two? Something about giving animals like uh the ability to reproduce with it Basically she she allowed beastmen and uh, cross species inter intermating, right? I'm trying to think about how authority of lust then would apply to her if she is lust. I see a bunch of furry attacks. You know, <laughs> there's probably something going on there, right? Thematically, it just seems like she's fitting lust even more. Ability too. I know some of you avoid watching anime openings to prevent spoilers, but the curious thing about this one fake is openings. that it also spoils fake things that aren't even going to happen. I That's can't right. tell you which scenes I'm talking Don't talk about it then, all right? We're just going to assume that everything we saw was just cap. Everything is a lie and it's perfectly fine. ...about because that would be a spoiler, but it shows a few things that just straight up didn't happen in the novel. So I thought that was interesting. The ending song was even better than the opening, in my opinion. I really? love the symbolism. I'd have to watch it again. I was too focused on the visuals for the opening, but maybe the ending was better. Also, this frame is hilarious. 
because Reinhardt literally just picks up Subaru by the collar and picks him up like a fucking stray cat or a dog to get him back. And we got some more interesting visuals, like Reinhardt whipping out the dragon sword. But it's not drawn. The sheet is still on, which is hilarious. This could be another fake spoiler, but it's fun to speculate regardless. He didn't use it this episode against Sirius, meaning she isn't worthy. So yeah, can bro. assume that one of the other Archbishops... Regulus! I want to see Reinhardt versus Regulus, bro. Is. Feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments. This was another 10 out of 10 episode. Classic. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, because I gotta go take a shit. So I'll see you in the comments until next week. Keep... I hope you have a good shit. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that information. Please go check out Mr. Echidna's channel. Here's the link, guys. Please give it a like, sub to his channel if you haven't. And I will see you next time.